Hi, welcome back to part two of my tuning guide. In part one, we saw the hoverboard motor running in open loop mode, and we read angle and velocity data from the hall sensors. In part two, we'll be looking at closed loop mode. Um, we'll be starting with voltage control mode, which is the simplest, and then moving on to velocity, then angle control. So step five, um, some of the exciting stuff happens. We, um, we want to link the um, sensor back to the, um, the motor. So basically we're doing closed loop now. So um, I will link the sensor, pass in the reference to the sensor to the motor, and I will choose one of the closed loop um, types. So I'm going to go for voltage. Um, I strongly suggest you go with voltage um, and not sort of velocity or angle first. Velocity or angle um, are more complicated. They've got a, um, a PID um, uh, parameters that need tuning. So voltage doesn't have that. Um, so voltage is basically like say you say you're setting your voltage to, to two volts. Um, the, you, the FOC algorithm will go as fast as it can for those um, two volts and um, if you start to put some sort of load on the motor then obviously it will slow down so it kind of it's a bit like the um, voltage control type is a bit like torque control type um, so that's set up um, I will turn on uh, monitoring so this will give us a bit of information when we're when we're ca calibrating the motor um, I'm going to set the motor's sensor align uh, value. So basically um, the sensor align value is only used in the um, init FOC method um, and so the init FOC method here is basically it's where the calibration of the FOC is done. So this is where it works at the, the electrical angle offset um, and which direction um, the sensor is in regard to the motor. So the, motor, the sensor might think that that's clockwise and the motor might think that's you know clockwise and that needs to be fixed with by setting a direction. So this in FOC will, will work out both the zero offset and the sort of natural direction of your motor sensor combination. So that's that sorted. Um, we need to, um, in the loop, we need to do the, the maths, the um, FOC maths, which gets done in here, it kind of works out what the angle should be. Um, and I will get rid of this. And you saw earlier that I said I wanted to use um, monitoring, so I'll ask it to monitor. And this will print out a few key variables that are appropriate for the, 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 um, the control type you're using. So, um, yep, I will turn my power on. I'll upload that. Turn my power on, see what happens. I'll see if I can get this in shot now. What we're expecting now is um, for this to sort of calibrate and click left five steps and then right five steps. Should have worked out the angle. Um, and now it's spinning. So basically it's going as fast as it can for one volt. If I change that to um, 1.5 volts, goes a bit faster, 2 volts, and minus 2 volts. And if I go to zero, um, it's using 40 milliamps. So um, you know you don't get this sort of slow speed, high current issues. Um, just kind of as a final step. Uh, before I finish this, I'm going to print out. Um, I talked a bit about the zero offset angle um, and the natural direction, so uh, I want to print those out. Uh, so it's motor dot. The reason I want to do this is because we don't want to calibrate every time. Um, we just need to, well, it depends on the, your, your sensor type, but if you've got a sense, sensor like a hall sensor or a magnetic sensor, then you can skip the calibration step because, um, you know, the, there's an absolute angle that you can get here. Um, so I'll do sensor, I think it's, 
actual don't I think those are the two I need to print out so and I will just stop it from doing any anything else um, while true disable the motor as well maybe disable so what I'm after is two values and I'll be using those in a second so it's going to go through the calibration step as normal but then it's going to disable itself and print out the values okay so I've got two values there um, and what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to punch those into the inner, inner FOC here and I think um, I think one is equal to clockwise but I can check that now um, just pop into here yeah one's clockwise so what what this is basically doing now hopefully and get rid of all of that again is if I can upload that it's skip it'll skip the calibration step because I've told it what the zero offset is and what the direction is and we go straight to to it working and so that's the end of um, step five so step six will be moving to velocity so this is another closed loop mode um, this needs some tuning values so um, low pass filter so this TF is basically measured in seconds so we're basically saying there's a 10 millisecond low pass filter going on so if you've got an, a noisy sensor um, this will sort of smooth it out a bit which makes the the job of the PID loop a lot easier um, we're going to start off with a p-value of zero. Um, I'm going to this target variable in this part. We're going to be using for tuning the p-term. So here, this is where we're tuning the p-term um, equals target. And um, we'll give it a constant speed of about five radians second I'll just turn my power supply on and get this in shot so the, um, the three columns here the left one's voltage this one is what velocity we've asked for so five radians per second and this is the actual velocity so obviously because our p term is zero um, we are not getting any voltage out and therefore the speed is zero so I'm going to change the p term to 0 0.1 um, 0 0.1 and two. oops I'm going upside down it is moving <laughs> I just wonder what's happening there it's this one that's plugged in um, so what we're looking for is the actual speed to get to about 60 to maybe 75 percent of the desired speed um, so at 0 0.2 we're at just under two radians per second so I'm going to increase 0 0.3 0 0.4 0 0.5 0 0.6 okay so yeah 0 0.6 we are at three radians per second so that's about as good as P will give you if I go too high like if I go to two it's starting to shake and judder you can probably hear it you might can't, probably can't see it so I'm going that back to 0 0.6 so I will bank that value I will I think that one's good um, so I'm now moving on to the integral term I want to tune that one next uh, so change that upload so the integral term is um, basically a sum of the errors so for um, it basically adds up over time so the longer that you are in error the more the integral term will, will kick in if you see what I mean so if we're looking at the state at the moment we are five uh, we want five we're getting three so our error is like two and that's happening all the time so this is going to be continuously added up and then multiplied by the i term um, 
but the item is zero at the moment so it's not doing anything so I'll, I'll try an item of um, 0.5 so that's gone up to four and a half now so it's almost well it's slow it's slowly gone up to five basically um, but I probably want it to increase a bit quicker than that so um, I can go up to one I probably two three I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with five here um, so the integral term um, and both and the p term is, is it kind of the tuning of them depends on this a little bit on how much load you've got on them and the desired speed and how quickly you want it to reach that desired speed so it's probably worth tuning it at the sort of speed and the load that you you want um, so I'm happy with that um, I think we said it was five so I'm going to get rid of that I'm going to bank my five and I'm going to change this back to target so basically now we've got a sort of tuned ish it's not going to be brilliantly tuned but a you know a tuned motor and we're going back to velocity I'm going to change its speed so I'm going to go up to about five radians per second you can see the voltage is 1.7 I'm going to try going up to eight there we go it's gone to two we've hit the voltage limit so that's going to give it a little bit more voltage to play with here so we can go past eight radians per second Um, let's try 15 and minus 5 and minus 15 and back to 5 step 7 the last step we'll be looking at angle control type um, so this introduces a um, a new PID so this is the angle PID so this is kind of an, the outer PID and that cascades to the velocity which becomes the uh, inner PID control loop so the think of this as being the angle of the error um, say we wanted to be at position 5 but we're at 3 um, the, ang the angle error would be two, um, 2 uh, radians that gets multiplied by this uh, KP term and that then gets fed out, fed to this as a velocity into the uh, velocity PID loop, uh, which then sort of come, its output is the voltage that goes to um, the motor. So uh, we set initial value of 0 0.5, um, and we I'm going to that target variable that I can easily change. I'm going to use it as the angle. So when I say six, it's going to move to six radians. Uh, minus six uh, you know it'll go the other direction so um, 0 0.5 is um, kind of a low initial uh, kind of strength to to the angle so what we're seeing here um, there's three the first one's voltage the second one is desired angle and the third one is actual angle so I'll say I want to move to angle five and you can see slowly, um, not very purposefully, it's moving towards five. And if I change this to one, so um, that error when it gets multiplied by one is going to kind of result in a faster velocity going to this this loop. Um, so we'll see when I ask for um, five this time, it'll be a little bit more purposeful. Um, one thing about this is that the the actual the amount of torque that this has doesn't isn't really affected too much by this term. It's it's well it it will be a bit, but um, it's mostly going to be lim uh, probably going to be limited by the the voltage limit. So um, at the moment I've got a voltage limit of two, and for this motor that's reasonably high. Um, so it's putting up a reasonable fight. Um, I was going up to one amp there uh, when I'm. When I sort of pull against it, 
if I was to drop this down to one, uh, what you call, what you'll see um, in the the three lots of uh, data uh, on the serial print is that we'll we'll hit the the voltage limit. Remember the first column is voltage here. We'll hit that'll hit the one voltage limit pretty soon. And now this is still fairly easy for me to turn, uh, but, and it's because we've hit that voltage limit. So that's if you wanted um, a kind of like a compliant type angle um, control loop, that might be the way you do it. Um, so, it, I mean, looking forward, uh, we are thinking about with the um, this providing a bit more flexibility with this um, angle feedback loop. At the moment, they cascade, um, but it would it's probably going to be fairly easy um, to change this so that the the, the angle uh, PID loop is directly connected to the voltage, as in we, we don't use this at all. Um, and that will give uh, different behavior and um, you probably might want to set some of the I and D terms then. Um, but that's going to be for another tutorial. Um, similarly, uh, we're going to be introducing control type talk at some point, but that requires uh, us to make a few more improvements in the way of um, current sensing. So that's the end of uh, this guide to tuning. Um, if you enjoyed it, then um, I put a few links below to some of the other stuff that I've been working on recently. Um, and thank you for using Simple FOC. So there's a whole bunch of other things we could have been talking about with regard to tuning. So if you've got any questions, post it on the community forum on the Simple FOC website. Um, really look forward to hearing what you guys do with Simple FOC. Um, there's already some crazy cool projects going on. So um, come over and check it out.